Hello guys and welcome to our series of webinar on visa process and how to make it simplified. As promised, I'm here with New Zealand visa. So guys, till now we have covered USA, Canada, Australia, and now we are going to talk about New Zealand. New Zealand is also one of the favorite destinations for Indians when it comes to education and also for a common and residency. So today when we talk about New Zealand visa, I'm going to tell you what are the types of different student visas that you can apply for when going to New Zealand for education. And also when you're applying for visa, what are the things that you need to take care of and what are the documents that you need to keep ready. New Zealand is not a very big country. It's an island country. And when we talk about New Zealand, there are a lot of things that come to our mind, right from natural beauty to the cricket team to biodiversity. New Zealand offers a variety of student visa for people traveling to New Zealand for education purpose. First one is the fee paying visa, which is good to study full time in New Zealand for more than three months. To make yourself eligible for this visa, you need to pay full cost of your course and enroll with an approved education provider. You can work up to 20 hours while you are studying and also full time in the holidays. This visa allows you to stay in New Zealand up to four years. If you are enrolled in any of the distance learning or correspondence courses from New Zealand universities and you require to visit New Zealand for exam purpose or any practical purpose, you can still apply for free paying student visa, which is again valid up to four years. This visa allows you to bring in your partner and child and you need to apply based on their relationship with you. This visa is valid for the same length of time as the study that you have paid for. So though it says that the visa can be utilized for up to four years, but if the course that you are enrolled in gets over in two years, then the visa will also expire in two years. Now pathway, as we have spoken about these earlier also, pathway are usually courses that allow you or that train you to get admission in any of the other university courses. Many times people with not high, very high proficiency in certain language, say English, or somebody who has completed their engineering and then wants to pursue a master's in business administration, it is mandatory for them to go for a pathway to make them acquainted with the flow of course and what are its requirements. On a pathway visa, you can study up to three consecutive courses. That means once you finish one course, another course you can join in after the one course is done. You need an offer of place from pathway education provider and also you can work for 20 hours on this visa. Now this working 20 hours in a week is mainly for your own expenses. But we should remember that as students, we should not rely on only this option. Anyway, a government would always require you to have a certain amount of balance in your account to make sure that you are able to sustain in the country. However, many people think that if they get a job opportunity, they will be able to sustain or provide for themselves. But this is not how it works. You need to have the arrangement separately. This is just for minor expenses. The permission that this visa get, grants you is for up to five years to stay in New Zealand. This visa does not allow you to bring your partner or dependent children but you can apply for them for a separate visa based on their relationship to you. You need to meet all the prerequisites for the second and third course as well. So many times people think, okay, first course I have enrolled in and I have all the prerequisites that are there, I'm eligible for it. Now the second and third course I will do as I go there. It doesn't work like that. You need to have all the prerequisites even for the second and third course. The third type of visa is foreign government supported student visa. That is if you have a loan or a scholarship from foreign government and you want to study full time in New Zealand. This is also eligible for English language study and it is valid for up to four years. You can apply for this visa only if the country of which you are a citizen of has an education agreement with the government of New Zealand. This visa also allows you to bring in your partner and children. Now friends, it is important to understand what are the essentials to begin the process of visa. How do you make yourself ready to begin the process? So first and foremost is time. You need to begin the process well in advance. Keep good amount of time in your hand. Sometimes when you submit in your papers, the authorities might request some more information. 
if your course is starting say in a month's time and you are trying to rush with the visa process it will be very difficult for the authorities as well as you to complete the process and even if the visa is granted you might have missed a portion of course or the beginning of your semester there the visa fee depends on the type of visa that you are applying for but it can be anywhere between 800 new zealand dollars to 1000 new zealand dollars a medical examination or a chest x ray might be required and if it is required it has to be done by an approved panel physician at zoom abroad we guide our students to find the right doctors which are panel approved so that you do not miss on the opportunity just because you did not have the right medical certificate the documents required now we have spoken about this multiple times guys still i would like to stress on it as the documents if even if one of them is missing it would lead to a rejection of visa application so all the marks which relevant to your course certificates a salary statement account salary slips experience letters income tax returns form 16 it is extremely essential that you keep these documents ready before starting the process of application the photographs that you need to submit should not be more than 6 months old and there are a number of technical requirements we saw a lot of technical requirements even for canadian visa process same way new zealand also requires a lot of technicalities when it comes to photographs submitted for visa purpose zoom abroad makes sure that the photographs our students submit are right and meeting all the technical requirements of the government guys if you remember we had divided the process of visa application in three parts and one part was financial information financial stability financial security it is extremely important for any government where you are traveling to to know whether you are stable or not financially and that you would not become a burden on them that is why an evidence of funds is necessary especially if you are applicants from india sri lanka nepal bangladesh and bhutan the financial evidence that you may need to submit can be either of 6 months or it may also go up to 3 years it totally depends on case to case basis and, and what is it that the consulate officials are looking for a minimum of 15000 new zealand dollars in addition to your fees are required for you to complete your education in a comfortable manner this is the amount that they would want you to have in your account in addition to your fees guys the anz bank of new zealand facilitates funds transfer for all the visa purposes and it is good to use this bank as an option though it does not guarantee you a visa acceptance it will show your seriousness about your education and also the financial stability and the steps that you are ready to take to successfully complete your degree when you arrive in new zealand you need to actually apply for entry permission now this can be done while you are on your way to new zealand you are, you are given a small form which you need to fill in and you can provide this when you reach new zealand so this entry permission will guarantee your entry into the country otherwise even though you have visa the permission to enter the country might not be granted also if you wish to move in and out of new zealand during your course of stay then you need to have a valid multiple entry travel conditions to return to new zealand so guys with this we have come to the end of our new zealand visa process i'm not explaining the entire process here because then how will we be able to meet so just drop an email if you wish to move to new zealand for education and let us help you 